past life journeys in the real world. Now, something very interesting with esoteric practitioners is this habit of engaging in a lot of foreign travel, particularly to ancient monuments, archaeological sites, exploring relics, old temples, and old churches of one kind or another. Now, I'm going to get a little speculative here, or maybe even a little new agey, which is many people who are familiar with the channel know I'm not a huge fan of. But here we have it. People who engage in these kinds of activities, people who are magicians, people who are serious esoteric practitioners, have been doing this work for many lives. Now, when you reincarnate, you still have to remember how to do things, and generally this involves learning and going to different teachers and so on and so forth. But another interesting phenomenon is this habit of essentially wrapping up your life or reviewing events and visiting places that you once existed in in previous incarnations. Many times people will come to places such as this wonderful amphitheater in Gem, Tunisia, and go, ah, I have this feeling that I've been here before. This kind of ennui, you name it. And that's all well and good, and is definitely part of the human experience. If you can share this with others, it tends to be particularly valuable for many people. But we are magicians. We're esoteric practitioners. We've got a few extra little cards up our sleeve that we can play. So one of the things I want to talk about is how to engage in astral time travel. Now, to do this, you need to know how to engage in astral breathing. You need to be able to engage your clairvoyance. That's step number two. Step number three, in general, you need to have a physical anchor for what you're looking at. This is curious, but we'll get to how that works. And then number four, you will of course need an actual technique to engage in. So number one, you need to be able to engage in astral breathing. Why? When you can engage in astral breathing, you'll be exchanging energy with the environment. You'll be suspending the perception of time. And this suspension of perception of time allows you, with the right ability and training, to see what happened in the past. Now, remote viewers, for example, often mention that when they're remote viewing a location, the picture of what they see is essentially the energetic center of gravity for whatever has occurred in that place previously. So if there was, say, a train station that millions of people funneled through over 100 years, even if that train station hasn't existed for 50 years, when they engage their remote viewing skills, they'll see a train station there. So this leads to number two. Your Claire skills, or specifically clairvoyance, if you want to see what's going on in a location, or, and or, Claire audience, if you want to be able to hear. When this happens, you start astral breathing, you start bringing the energy of the place in and out of you. You start engaging with essentially the energetic imprint on an area. Then you turn your clairvoyance on. And if you have it, your clairaudience as well. So you can begin seeing into the subtle realms images and impressions of that energetic world that's overlaid on the physical world. So this is step two. Step three is interesting in that you tend to need a physical connection to the place, preferably by physically being there. Pictures don't really work too well. You get more of a mental level impression. Part of this is, is we talk a lot about vital, astral, mental, akashic, non-dual light energies in the 60 skills curriculum. The one we don't talk about too much is this intermediate energy between astral and physical. Some people refer to this as the etheric. Other people might refer to this as the low astral. This is that place that has a physically tangible nature to it that stores a lot of the energetic impressions governing what 
goes on in a place. The catch is, <laughs> etheric energy, or this near astral, or maybe vital, if you will, energy, doesn't move very far. Typically, 10 meters, 50 meters, maybe 100 meters, is about as far as that can go. So if you're going to a transmission class where a guru or meditative practitioner is transmitting an energy, they can be thousands of miles away, and you'll get mostly the astral level impression as long as it's live. If it's recorded, you'll generally get a mental level impression. But you won't get the etheric or vital effect unless you're right next to the guy. So this is the reason why esoteric healing is most effective when you're right next to the practitioner, because then that vital or etheric level energy is in fact accessible to the patient. Okay, now you need a technique. And as you know, I don't like to share a technique on the channel a whole lot, but this time I will in fact make an exception. So I'm in this circular amphitheater in Gem, Tunisia. What I would do is I would begin astral breathing. Slow time down. Turn on my clairvoyance. Open my eyes. Then I begin going counterclockwise around the arena. First slowly, then moving it faster and faster and faster. And as it speeds up, you should start to see pictures and impressions of things that have happened in the past. So yeah, some arena fighting, actors giving oratory, politician giving a speech, all of these kinds of things. Now that's an example of doing something very quickly and getting some surface level impressions. It's basically how it works. I mean, technique with this kind of thing, not terribly difficult. You do have to layer a bunch of other training on top of itself in order to make it work. And this is one of the real secrets of esoterica. The baseline techniques aren't that hard, guys. It's pretty simple stuff. But you have to be able to do multiple things at the same time. That's what makes it hard. And of course, the practice necessary to be able to do it at all. So I'll leave with one final point, kind of a bonus point, if you will, where from what I've seen, human beings are the only entities that leave this impression. So the past life thing, there may be spirits hanging around because of the energy of the place, but the stuff you see with people is like the memory of who they were. And from what I've seen, really only human beings generate this. It's quite curious. Spirits don't do this. They're either there or not. Animals, from what I can tell, not really. Human beings are the only things that generate this energetic memory that you can access and engage with. So, you know, be judicious in what memories you wish to engage. Because, uh, as I've said before, you can't unsee things. So, if you enjoyed the topic of today's discussion, consider subscribing to the channel, giving us a like down below. And if you want to learn more about the 60 Skills world, go to www.60skills.com. Otherwise, as per usual, train hard and be well.